guy who I was a fan of because he played not one but two roles on one of my favorite TV shows, Deadwood. Grew up wearing a Steve Largent jersey in the Pacific <laughs> Northwest. That's how I learned about uh, my next guest who's here in studio. He's in a new film, Just Before I Go, coming out April 24th, directed by Courtney Cox. Garrett Dillahunt, good hey, to see you here. Thank you. So you grew up wearing a Largent jersey back in the day? Yeah, I liked Largent. I liked Kenny Easley. Oh, I just, yeah. Jersey's hard to find for Kenny Easley, but I found one that was autographed. Uh -huh. But I took it out of the thing because I want to wear it. So you wore you know, a, 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 an autographed Kenny Easley jersey. I know, which is sort of... Oh, good for you. But you know, they should be worn, right, if you got one. But, yeah, that, that was my era. We were there when they, the team, you know, became a team. In the Kingdom, In 76. Right? Yeah, the Kingdom and, like, Sherman Smith and Jim Zorn and all those guys. Jim like, Zorn. We were my, dying for a team. Jim Zorn, my memories of Jim Zorn is that he would... Serpentine behind the line of scrimmage, trying to bind time, is he would, where he would scramble as far back as he would yeah. side to side, it, it, trying to fling it all the way downfield. I can't remember margin. what his career yardage was, but it's it's kind of astronomical. I mean, yeah. he's got some other statistics as well that, yes, are, that are pretty astronomical, but yeah. still, he was a great quarterback. So, yeah. so seeing the Seahawks have a uh, a run like they've had with Pete Carroll, going mm -hmm. back to the days where you saw them form. You know, and there was well, the the the, the yeah. Knox Co coach Knox Kurt Warner era too in between Remember there, oh. right? And then and then obviously Holmgren with Matt Hasselbeck and Sean Alexander, and now yeah. seeing them now, what what's that like for somebody who who watched this team get well, born? Well, they did enjoy quite some success under under Holmgren, right? And sure. With Hasselbeck, I mean, they got to the show, and they did. That was exciting for us. You you can kind of tell by how rabid and you know ridiculous mm -hmm. <laughs> we are as fans that we've been waiting a long time for some success. No doubt. You know, but it, it feels great. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Last night on and everyone accuses us of being like like well are you a new fan like you're just a band right? and you're like what what's <laughs> with <laughs> no we just haven't had a reason to That's cheer. True. That is true. That you have to be a bandwagon jumper yeah, just because you're from Seattle. What or is because up the team's with that? finally winning, or I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, they're everywhere. Because uh, last night when the, the schedule came out, I was you know hosting the show on NFL Network, and we had uh, a live shot with a reporter in a bar in in the Metroplex area in Dallas. And the first shot were two Seahawks fans behind him holding up a Seahawks fan club <laughs> banner. <laughs> were they I, all painted? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they were decked out in the teal, you know, in the green, yeah. and the whole bit. They man. got nice uniforms. They do. You know, they got they got pretty helmets. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Garrett Dillon here on the Rich Eisen Show. I've been a fan of yours for for quite some time. Deadwood, uh, you played two characters. Yeah, it changed in, everything for me. Yeah. In Deadwood, where you shot <clears throat> Wild Bill dead. Yes. Which, spoiler alert, is Brockman yeah, said in the first hour of the show. <laughs> well, we all know Wild Bill doesn't. It's a decade it, ago. Things don't work out very well for Wild Bill, right? Um, and then, so you, you, play, you play the character who shoots him dead, uh, Jack McCall, and then Francis Walcott. Walcott, yeah. You play another character where you come back, right? Yeah, I come back for the second season. It was, it was a shock and a wonderful surprise to me as well. How, does, how was that described to you that, hey, you're going to come back. I was just, I was so blue, like my last day as McCall, I was, I had, we had a good time. I got along very well with Milch. I liked the whole crew up there. We shot up at Melody Ranch up in Newhall, mm -hmm. which is, uh, it's been there since the 40s. It's, 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 it's a Western town where they've shot so many incredible Westerns. Here in Southern California? Yeah, okay. Here, up, up to 14. Check it out. There's a museum. <laughs> a Deadwood Museum? Or, there's just or a just museum, a... a Melody Ranch Museum. Okay. But there's a lot of Deadwood stuff there. Uh huh. And, uh, and I was saying to Milch, so this is it, huh? This is it. And I was all sad. I had my little droopy eye going. <laughs> wow, I and thought I, that was makeup. You just did know, that yeah. for the radio audience. You just closed half <laughs> for of the radio one audience. eye. Yeah, we, we, I, was supposed oh to my have, Lord. I was supposed to have this cross-eyed contact lens. Uh -huh. I, I'd never worn contacts, so uh -huh. I was all, all excited about that. Mm -hmm. Thank God it didn't show up in time. Right. And they're like, well, we don't know what to do. And I was like, well, I can do this. Uh -huh. So that became the droop-eyed <laughs> whatever. Yeah. That's freaky. <laughs> I, I knew you were talented, but that's, sad. that's... I've done it in several characters, you'll see. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Uh, so then you're... like an idiot. So you're able to come back as a wide-eyed, yeah, vicious exactly, animal, by yeah. the way, of a character. So Milch, Milch asked me to come back as Hearst first. You know, that, that was the original idea. No kidding. And Ger Gerald McCraney played... Yeah, uh, better than I ever could have. Right. You know, but I, I went a year doing research on Hearst, we were gonna shave my hairline back, we had this prosthetic nose built, we had all these plans. Mm -hmm. Then he called and said, it's just not gonna happen in the second season, you know, but there's this other guy. 
sort of as consolation, he threw out this fictitious character that was Hearst's uh, point man. So you were gonna play the George Hearst character, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but they decided that he wasn't gonna fit in in season two, yeah, or not until the end of season two, Not until the two, end, right? he was more of a figurehead. Right. You know, so then he came up with this other no idea. No kidding, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, uh, and thank God. I mean, I love my scenes with Gerald and, and you know, right. the end of season two, I loved him. And I think he played it better than I ever could he have anyway. He was spectacular, yeah. spectacular, and then you know yeah. he was in House of Cards playing a bad guy too, pretty much in that also. He's great. And then you showed up and justified this past season, and I thought that was a pretty yeah, neat first time Deadwood since reunion. Deadwood that I'd seen Tim. We've been trying to work together for a while. I guess he was right. on this show, right? Yeah, he's been on this show. Yeah, yeah I love a couple that, times. I love that guy. He's he's hilarious. People don't know how funny he is and quick witted. Yeah, uh, but we yeah. had a five second delay. Also, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, because yeah. I like asking uh, people on, on Deadwood <laughs> what their favorite curse word is, and I don't think I can do Does that. Does everyone right say here. the same one? Well, I mean, there, there's the interesting that one, one is was used. they're poly, they're polysyllabic. That's the that's my favorite part about Deadwood because it was ba <laughs> you know the the flowery language uh, to say the least. But I'll I'll hold that for offline, as they say. Um, what was it like being the season a series finale of, of Justified? What was that like for you? Uh, I wish I could have stayed the entire season. I, I have mm -hmm. a show I'm doing on Amazon, and they, they released me for eight episodes, so I was able to do eight mm -hmm. of Justified, but uh, it's great. You know, what, what Deadwood did for me and Tim and probably everyone on it, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it, it almost ruined everything else because we're, we're tr we, we try to make everything Deadwood, basically, then, and, that's, and he's a producer now on Justified, and mm -hmm. uh, t to those shows' benefit, I think, you mm -hmm. know. Just, he, he's trying to go the extra mile and just see what, what interesting thing can happen, what unexpected thing can we do here rather than just what's written, you know. What if we add in, oh, you're allergic to dust mm -hmm. today. You know, just sneeze through the entire, you know, just, it's, no one will remark on it, but it's interesting. Sure. You know? and, and he's trying to do that on, on Justified, and it was just so much fun to a work with him again. Spectacular show, no doubt about that. Tell me about your movie just before I go. Courtney Cox directing it. You're yeah. in it with Kate Walsh, Rob Riggle, another guy who's been on this program. Oh, he's, he yep. knows a lot about he, yeah. He's, he's a nutty Kansas City <laughs> Chiefs Royal fan for sure. What was this movie like for you? It's fun, What's this it is my second time working with Courtney. I don't think people realize what a talented director she is, mm -hmm. but uh, I'd work with her anytime. You know, she knows her way around the set, as mm -hmm. you can imagine, and she sets a tone. It's a lot of fun, mm -hmm. a lot of laughing going on. And I trust her eye, you know, if she says something's not working, you know it's not working, especially mm -hmm. in, a, in a comedy like this one. Well, no, there's some. Right, yeah, and she so what do you, who do you play in this, in this film? Uh, well, Sean William Scott plays this guy, Ted, who's pretty depressed f from various things in his life. He's decided he's gonna kill himself. He goes back to his hometown and okay. wants to straighten things out with a lot of, you know, the, the town bully and, and this is a comedy. bad teacher. I know, <laughs> okay. yeah. It's a comedy about suicide and attempting suicide. <laughs> and, uh, and I play his brother, Lucky, who's chief of police, but, mm -hmm. uh, and, a, and a not politically correct kind of fellow. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a sexist, homophobic, you know, he thinks he's hilarious. A lot of C word. It's gonna happen if be careful be now. Warned. Okay. Yeah. Cutler. Yeah, Cutler. That's the that's one. Right. That's right. That's the Cutler. That's the one. <laughs> Certain <laughs> parts of this country. I got right. You Cutler. <laughs> <laughs> that's wrong. We're going to Chicago next week. That's been that's been uttered every now and then. That comes out on April. 24th. Uh, Garrett, thank you for coming in here. I really oh, it's appreciate it. a pleasure. It. This is a riot. Yeah, come back anytime. At Garrett with one T, Dillahunt on Twitter. Just before I go, coming out April 24th. Like I said, I've been a big fan of yours. Please come back anytime. Oh, I appreciate it. You bet. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.